Hi everybody, welcome back. This is uh, Bruce Zabowski at Zabowski Studio. I'm now going to be doing part two today. I'm working on the painting again for a little bit. And I'm going to be working on, of course, the uh, today I'm going to work on just the orange color of the body of the box car. Get that uh, second coat on, start working up textures. And over on the side here, the other day when I worked on this, uh, I couldn't. I can't find my reference photo for what's back there. Obviously, there's another box car on the other side, so I think I'm going to make it like a kind of a cool green, some kind of green color to uh, complement the sort of orangish color on the side of the box car, and just kind of you know make it up back there because I don't want a, just a flat dark color. I don't think that looks too good. So yeah. And uh, let's get try started. to shoot this at a little bit of an angle here so that the glare directly on the paint, like this, I'm not sure which is going to be better. But so, what I've done is uh, pretty much I'm going to make that area back here just like a, another box car behind this one that's in the foreground. And like I said before, I just kind of made it green to kind of play in with the orange, a little complimentary sort of thing. So I just got a little bit of green color over the dark and uh, now I'm going to work on this part here and see how it goes. And I just want to get a few little details here that really like this a lot. So once I get this orange color in here, get some variation. Then we put the little bits of graffiti from my reference photo. And uh, we'll go from there. Here's the selection of brushes I'll be using to work on this side of the box card here. And they range, I'm not sure if this is focusing in, but uh, the widest one is uh, approximately about almost three quarters of an inch. So that's what I'll be using to uh, work on this today. Bristle brushes. And now what I've done is I've mixed up some color for the base tone of the box car. And I'm going to do what I did in my another uh, painting I did outdoors. Instead of just filling in, because I mixed up quite a bit of paint, but I'm still not sure if I have enough. So I'm going to do what I did in one of my plain air pieces and, you know, I'll Put some paint on, work some areas. Try not to have all of that color I mixed up in one area and then have to remix potentially, even though I know the colors I used. It could be a slight variation. So I'll put this on in different areas, almost kind of randomly. So if I have to mix up a new batch of, of color, I'll be able to tie it into this other color because it'll be super close because I know the colors I used to mix it. But it just helps, and I'll save some of the original color I mixed to put the new color I have to mix, basically making another pile, into that so-called mother color. So just doing this, and I'll do this over the whole surface of this area where the orange is, just kind of dancing around. I played around with a little bit of suggestion of uh, graffiti there, but I'll put that back in. It's no big deal. Some of it will go through. I might reuse those lines, might not. So this is what I'm going to do for the whole area of this. Just moving the paint around in different areas, not working, not filling in block by block. And I think that will help give variety to the color also in, in the surface of the uh, because you have a lot of this orangey color. And then once I get this face tone on, I'll go back in and either lighten areas, dirty up areas to give the age look to the uh, metal. Another little tip is having a mall stick. And I actually have a sloped roof here in my studio. So what I do is I lean the mall stick against the edge of my easel tray and then against my ceiling and there's a space mall stick does not touch any edges of the canvas because if it did and there's wet paint up there it would rub the paint off so you want to be careful of that and now you would have control 
to do detail work. You can also make something to attach to, to your easel that would do the same thing if you don't have a slanted uh, ceiling in your, in your room. Um, just something that keeps it basically an inch or two away from your canvas and you can even make it slide back and forth. I've seen those on YouTube. So, just another idea because I use them all to stick a lot in my architectural and uh, mechanical type uh, paintings. Right now I'm working on detailing the graffiti, putting in the highlights. Now I'm going to put the second coat of the yellow color on. Right now it's kind of uh, pale, but uh, that's what I'm working on now. And overall, this is how it's shaping up. Doesn't look like much. Working on these larger paintings takes time. Been out about an hour and a half, and I'm just you know working on the little details. I did also work on the numbers. I took a little burnt umber. Makes it a little white, so I kill down the white a little bit. It doesn't seem to stand off so much. And once all this is dry and I do my next layers, I'll what I call dirty down the color. I'll streak paint across it to suggest age and dirt and that sort of thing. So that'll be the fun part, especially with the graffiti. So, all right. So, it doesn't look like much after a couple hours of work, but I've brightened the yellow graffiti, worked on shadows where the rib right here because I added graffiti from a different source. You want to be careful about paying attention how it overlaps certain parts for a 3D effect. Um, still got a little work to do there and uh, takes time to do these big ones, especially a, a subject matter like this. Uh, it's not like there's a lot of big areas of sky like a landscape I can just put in there super quick. Uh, but it's really kind of actually enjoyable. Usually I do these on a smaller scale like my train pieces and such and it's kind of nice having the space so to speak to put in certain details and uh, it really uh, gives me the opportunity to work on textures and such so I'm going to work a little more on it uh, try to get some highlights over here on the ladder, bring that out a bit, that sort of thing. Uh, and on the edges of the ribbing, uh, just to give it... I like to try to, when I stop painting for the day on a piece, I like to try to leave it in a state that's kind of exciting. So when you come back to it, you're kind of like, wow, I can't wait to get going. So this is a fun part. Right along. In here, I'm starting to put the dark shadows in. Over the original tone up here which is a little lighter and man you really really start to see it pop as I pan back it really starts to give it some life so I'm going to work on that and then show you what those darks can do to pop the lights hope you enjoyed this part two and uh, please watch part one watch the process and thank you for watching. If you enjoy these, please subscribe to my channel and if you have any comments, put them in the uh, comments box. Thanks for watching.